All right, so if you haven't fired up Jupyter Notebook in a while, then open your Anaconda command line if you're in Windows, or go to Terminal if you're on Mac, and then type in the command Jupyter Notebook and hit Enter. Your browser should fire up and drop you off on localhost with your folders. Here, you want to navigate to the ML projects folder that you've set up earlier. And there, you want to create a new Python 3 notebook. And uh, we're going to click up here where it says untitled, and we're going to rename it to um, 03 gradient, oh man, I can't type, gradient descent. And we're going to hit rename, and now we're ready to go. For our first cell in our new notebook, we're not going to be typing any Python code. <laughs> Instead, we're going to be making our notebook a little bit more pretty, a little bit more readable by inserting a heading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to cell and then change the cell type from code to markdown. So select markdown here and you'll notice that the IN here has disappeared because this cell will now no longer be evaluated as code. So we said we're going to make a title. Our first title is going to be notebook imports and packages. Yeah, and I'm going to hit shift enter. So now we can see here, this is just plain text. And in the cell below, we're going to be adding our import statements. So the first thing that we're going to import is our old friend matplotlib pyplot. We're going to be doing some plotting in this notebook. So I'm going to write import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. I'm going to stick with the same naming convention here. And we're also going to import another library, another package called numpy. And uh, this is commonly referred to as NP. So a lot of people use NP and we'll use that as well. So we're going to import NumPy as NP. And we're also going to add the good old Jupyter Notebook statement, percentage sign matplotlib inline. So we're going to be doing some plotting. So we're going to add this matplotlib inline statement so that we can export our plots very, very nicely. I'm going to hit shift enter now. And uh, before we go on, um, I'm going to revert back to this markdown up here. I'd really like to have a section heading. And uh, let me show you how we can get that because notebook imports and packages is very, very small. If we put a hashtag in front of this and hit space, then immediately the font becomes a lot bigger, bolder, and blue. And this is because this hashtag is telling Jupyter that now notebook imports and packages should be considered as a heading. Now it's not actually gonna look like this when I hit Shift Enter, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna be big and bold. So this is a very nice way to create section headings in your notebook. Now, if you wanted this a little smaller and one level down in the size and boldness, then you can put two hashtags and you can see how the markdown adjusts really nicely and uh, it will look like this in contrast, right? And you can even try three, right? So there's different levels of uh, boldness and size that uh, you, can, you can play with for your section headings to keep your notebook organized. So I'm gonna go with one and uh, this way we can find our imports very, very quickly. Now we're gonna dive straight into our first example. <laughs> now the thing I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna take the cell here and I'm gonna modify it to be a markdown cell as well. So this is my chance to show you a little bit about what Jupyter Notebook can do. So I'm gonna say example one, example one, and uh, example one is going to be about a very, very, very simple cost function. And uh, the cost function is gonna look like this. It's gonna be f of x is equal to 
x squared plus x plus 1. So let's see what this markdown would actually look like. It would look something like this. But um, the cool thing about markdown uh, is that you can actually make the mathematical notation look a lot better. So you can add a dollar sign in the front and you can add a dollar sign in the back. And if I press shift enter now, then you can see that indeed we have this formatting here in the markdown cell looking like an actual equation. So this is gonna be example one, it's gonna look like this. I can make this bigger as well. So I can give it a uh, section heading, if you will. And now it's gonna look like this. So this is gonna be a, a simple cost function, right? Here we go. Now, uh, if this is the first time that you're seeing this, then you might be confused about what are these dollar symbols, right? Well, this is a, a markup notation from a system called LaTeX. And LaTeX uh, uses tags like these dollar signs to mark a particular section as a mathematical notation. If I, uh, if I double up on the dollar signs, then I'm giving it a different kind of tag and you can see that it'll have a different formatting as well. So in this case, it's centered. So single dollar sign is inline and the other tag, the double dollar sign is for display. So we're gonna be using uh, LaTeX a little more in this uh, module. And uh, you might actually see this in, uh, in many, many other places as well. It's, it's super popular for uh, writing mathematical equations or, or scientific papers, um, especially in, in academia. The best analogy that I can and think of of how LaTeX works is that it works really similar to um, XML or, or HTML. So uh, if you were to go to a website like, uh, say, example.com and you right click on it and you go to view page source, then uh, you'll see the HTML document so while the website will look like this, uh, example domain is actually surrounded by two HTML tags, title and title. So a beginning tag and an end tag. And LaTeX sort of works a bit like this as well. You've got uh, markup, uh, meaning these tags, that kind of give structure to your document. So it's through these tags that uh, the Jupyter Notebook knows how to format a particular section of text in the, uh, in the markup cells. <laughs> now that we've added the, the markup and our section heading, uh, we can now actually you know, write the Python code for this function. And it would look like this, df space f parentheses x semicolon new line return x double multiplication sign for the power so times times two plus x plus one and uh, that's our function right this is our function in python code now what we're going to do is we're going to generate the data so i'm going to just add a little comment here uh, make data and the way we're going to do this is by using numpy. So our data is going to sit in a variable. I'm going to call it x underscore one. I'm going to call it underscore one because this is our first example. So x underscore one is going to be equal to something and it's going to get its value from a numpy function. Numpy was np and the function we're going to call is lin space. Yeah np.lin space parentheses start is going to equal minus three comma stop is going to equal three and then num num is going to equal say 100. Let me hit shift enter and explain what I did just there. So the uh, lin space function is something that comes from the numpy library. I'm gonna pull up the documentation for you guys. And I've got a couple of 
arguments that I gave it. I gave it a start value, a stop value, and a value for this third one called num. Now, Linspace creates a sequence, yeah, a sequence of numbers. It creates our data for us, and it creates a sequence of numbers between the start value and the stop value, and the number of samples is set by that third parameter, so that third value, the num value. Back in our Python notebook, we can actually take a look at what this would look like. So if I put uh, x underscore one here and hit shift enter, then we can see what it is that we've actually got back. We've got back an array that starts at negative three and goes to three and has a hundred individual data points, a hundred individual values that are spaced out equally uh, between minus three and three. If this, uh, you know, was, I don't know, the number 10 instead of 100, then I'd get an array with much fewer values, right? Just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, right? So you can see this linspace function here is very, very handy for uh, generating data. And uh, one of the things I quite like doing is actually adding the names for the arguments uh, when I make a call to my function because it, I just find it so much more readable <laughs> than having it like minus three, three, and 10, right? Like that's 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 much, much harder to read, um, especially when you're coming back to it and you might not remember it so well. So x underscore one is an array with approximately 100 values. Uh, we can even give it more. We can even give it like say 500, right? I'm gonna hit shift enter and that's us having made our data. Now that we've got our data, uh, let's plot it, right? Let's graph it using our function. So I'm gonna add the plot by uh, using our matplotlib plt. So we can actually do this in, uh, in one line, right? We can say plt dot plot, and then parentheses x underscore one comma, and then what? f of f of x. No, f of x underscore one. We're going to feed the actual data that we have in x1 into our function here. And we're going to plot f of x as the sort of, this is our y, right? And x underscore one, this is our x. So now let's call plt.show parentheses at the end. Let's see what happens. And here it is. This is what our function actually looks like. It's a parabola. I'm going to actually center this a little bit as well. So I'm going to set the axes by writing plt dot xlim parentheses, and I'm going to give it a range of minus three uh, to, I don't know, three, right? <laughs> this is what we generated our data from, right? From minus three to three. And the y-axis we can set with plt dot y lim parentheses zero comma uh, I don't know say from zero to eight Let's see what we get this is starting to look a little bit better I'm gonna add two labels as well with uh, plt dot x label parentheses and then the string x give it a font size of 16 and for the y-axis we're going to just write f of x so plt dot y label parentheses and then I'm going to give it a string f of x comma font size oh, my typing font size is also equal to 16 there we go all right so uh, that's the plot of our function so that's pretty good, right? So we've got a cost function, an example of one, x squared plus x plus one. Uh, and the way we've kind of broken this down is we've created a function, a Python function, right? Also called it f of x, less confusing. We've created some data. And the reason we had to do this was so that we could generate a nice graph, right? So x underscore one used numpy's lin space, and then we've just used matplotlib again to graph our data here.
in the next lesson, we're going to set the stage for minimizing our cost. If f of x is our cost, then the lowest cost will be at the bottom of this graph, right? So it'll be somewhere around here. All we have to do now is find out what's the lowest cost and for what value of x is our cost the lowest.